Yes, hello there, this is Seriously Speaking. My name is Adesua Onyenokoy. As you can see, I'm on set with Omotola Jalade Ekeni, the person that you can recognize just by calling one name. If you say Omotola, they recognize her. If you say Omotola Jalade Ekeni, they recognize her, you know, Monica. But on the show today, we're talking about Omotola 4.0. Now, I find it interesting, we, did that, we decided that in this month of love, we should have one entertainer who will capture the whole essence of love both for self and for others. And she came to mind instantly because TW Magazine had done a cover on her. And I'm like, it should be a mortal. I didn't give up to 24 hours to make up her mind. And I said, she must be on the show. Welcome, it's Seriously Speaking. We'll be back shortly with a mortal, one-on-one on, one on Seriously Speaking. Yes, welcome back. A mortal is on set. And the first question I'm going to ask her is one thing a lot of people ask me. Now only you won. You got married early. You have four kids who are successful. You're a successful actress. You are a successful singer. Only you want Nikon. <laughs> Nikon this world. Only you are come. <laughs> <laughs> you know, welcome to Seriously Speaking. Thank you very much, Auntie. I, I, wonder, I wonder, though, when you decided to celebrate your 40th, right, was something you always thought about? What did you try to prove to others by doing it differently? You had one whole week of celebration. It was about a week. Five days. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually want a party. I didn't want a party. I, I just wanted to elope, go somewhere, some nice island or something, and mm -hmm. put my legs up. And um, some of my very wicked friends, like Adibola and the rest of them, talked me into doing something here. They were like, no, you can't do that. You know, I mean, this is some sort of iconic age, and people would expect, you know, to see something from you. Um, and then they knew how to get me, which is, why don't you just do something? For your activism. <laughs> Yeah, it was like, why don't you do something that has to do with your activism, you know, just a statement or something. And then so I started to think about it. I was like, okay, so what am I going to do at this time? What am I uh, feeling like and everything? And then uh, we came up with different topics. Um, it was, at first, it was about the NYSC um, plight, you know, and a lot of people don't know that a lot of um, youth coppers have actually died. Um, and when we started to do our research, the statistics were actually very staggering. Um, some of them never make the news. Um, I remember one about a pregnant woman who actually died, um, you know, because she was uh, posted very far away in some remote place that was far away from um, where they could get health care or something of that nature. And she was pregnant, you know. So um, these were the issues that we wanted to actually uh, uh, bring to light and everything. But somehow, um, I guess my you know, my bigger picture thing and all of that took over. And um, I was pulled more towards mental slavery um, because it's a bigger issue and it's a deeper issue that a lot of people don't really pay attention to. Um, so we, we, that was how things started. And because from, you had this five-day thing, you started, first of all, with the give back. Yeah, which is with, uh, oh yeah, so that's give and let give. Mm -hmm. And that's something I do every year, and I hadn't done it in a, in a while. And so everybody thought, oh, why don't you do it? This was last year, December, and I said, oh, I'll do it maybe towards my birthday uh, period. So it was a no-brainer that it should come at this time. Mm -hmm. And so we thought about doing that, and that was the first thing I wanted to do on my birthday, which is on the 7th of February. And then the couple's thing. Yeah, the couple's thing was just, I think the couple's thing was kind of like a feeler. <laughs> because um, eventually, when we now decided what we wanted to do with the activism, and then we knew, you know, what when it, my birthday was on, on a Wednesday, which is on 7th. And then somehow we knew that we wanted to go to Baragri and then do the symposium, which was going to be on Friday or something. Um, and then somehow I, I never liked to do parties on Saturday. So the party idea had come up somewhere. We had, Eventually, I agreed to do that. And I knew I was going to do that on a Sunday. So um, the, the, the whole thing was, do we start one day, rest, come back? And I know myself, if I rest, that's it. <laughs> that's it. So I'm like, you know what? I can't rest. We better keep going. Find something to do. We better keep going. And so it was natural that um, the idea came up that why don't you do everything that has to do with your brand? You know, something that you feel connected to. And so the couples retreat was the next thing everybody thought was a good idea. And then, yeah. Yeah, but everybody thought it was a good idea because you're one of the couples in entertainment that has, you're 23 years in marriage now. Yeah. And um, you married pretty early, under 20. And I wonder, what would, if you had married a guy who didn't let you still get the education that you wanted to get and get your career? <laughs> I would have left. <laughs> it's really not that hard. But, you know, we already had all that discussion before um, we got married. He so knew... even at that age, you had that kind of... Yes, I, I wrote down a lot of my dreams at age 
12, 13, 14, 15. By age 15, I had written out a lot of everything I am doing today. Um, so when I met him, I, I met him when I was 16. You and know. you had become born again. You met him in church or something like that. I met him in church, yes. Mm -hmm. I met him um, in church through his sister. Um, so I already, I was pretty much 16, but I looked like I was 21 or 22 yeah, or something. I was, the same way. I was very mature. I knew what I wanted. And so when I met him, I didn't, it wasn't, we were, in, we were just friends. You know, I was friends with his sister, his older sister, and she introduced us. And he wasn't even living in Nigeria. So he would just come every now and then. He knew about my family, so he would come around. So it was just because he's, he's out of, you know, siblings were already friends. Mm -hmm. So he, he just, you That's know, blended thing. in. He was just a friend, really. And um, I get, for him, he said, when I turned 18, that's when he felt like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's time to, so this girl is <laughs> Let's leave the friend zone or something. But um, so it was pretty much, I, I can't even say we really dated or courted or, you know, or something in the regular way, you know, because we're just friends. You know, just that kind of person. So that's you something know. to say, you were friends first before you took it that way. Yes, of but course. But like yes. I said, you, you, you knew what you wanted and you went for it. Yes, I did. At 16, you already knew all the things in your bucket list. Yes. So when you turned 40, there were still some things you had to take away. Was being a mother and being a musician and being an actress, one was top on the list? Um, I didn't really seek out to be a mother. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> seek out marriage. I didn't, I didn't even think I was a marriageable type. I, yeah, yeah, mom said my so. Mom I mean, you have to reach so. today's woman to find out the details <laughs> of that, actually. You know, so that was not something that was in my head anyway. But I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to be an activist. I've always wanted to be. I've been an activist since I was a child. Um, so I've always... In fact, I have to tell people, you know, one interview we had with Omotola, she talked about how... You will cry to get your own way. You will insist yeah. on your way. I will throw transforms. I will do anything to mm -hmm. make sure I would Where stop. Somebody's right. Yeah, I will stop traffic. I will do anything. I was that vicious. Um, and I've been doing it since I was, as long as I can remember, since I was little. Even some stories were told to me of things I've done. I was like, really? <laughs> you know, so um, I've always thought I was going to do something in that line. So at some point, I thought I was going to be a lawyer because everybody used to say I could argue a dead man to life. You played to life. lawyer in alter ego. <laughs> was that you living your life in the alter yeah, ego Yeah, I think, movie? yeah, <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> so yeah, so that, and then entertainment-wise, I always thought first I would be a singer, mm -hmm. not an actor. I always mm -hmm. saw myself on stage, I love to perform. And so for me, that was what I thought would be my first, if I was going to go that route, mm -hmm. that that would be my introduction to entertainment. But that didn't happen by accident. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so when I left school, I was, um, I was looking for a job. I was doing anything I could find to help my mom. And so I, I became Who's an actor. Who's now late? Yeah, she's now late. Um, but I, 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 there was an, a, a model, you know, um, on Ivy Akereli around my neighborhood. He was then Mr. Bick. He was some sort of supermodel at the time. And so he introduced me to modeling. And then uh, while I was a model, another friend of mine was going for uh, a movie uh, audition. Casting, yeah. yeah. And so I went with her. She didn't get the part. She encouraged me to go in and try. Um, and so that was it. That's how I got the part. And that was my mm -hmm. beginning and all, mm -hmm. my foray into acting. But I mean, you've done it for 20 something years. I would it 20 years, two years ago. Yeah, or so, so it was 22 years, years now. And it, OK, matter. now you say you turned 40. You said, I've done this, I've done that. Now I want to accelerate. <laughs> I, I choose to use the word accelerate. Because right. it's like you said, you are now on gear four mm -hmm. point zero. And gear four is, yes, you know. As, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Pretty much, there's so many things I've wanted to do that, you know, having children, having a home, and I've always done everything I wanted to do. I mean, don't get me wrong, but you can't do it to, the po to, to your satisfaction because you have other responsibilities and you're carrying so many things. But being a mother was important for you. It was extremely kids, important, mm -hmm. and, and they were growing up. Um, I didn't leave my work for them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't ever, you know, advocate. advocate for people to leave their work because of children or for for marriage, um, I say to women, you can do it all. You really can. Um, so don't be lazy. I know it's not easy, but you can. So don't leave anyone for any, you know. It might slow you down a little bit, but, you know, you Did can do it anyway. Did they slow you down? I, I, you gave up a few things. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they slowed me down, quite honestly. Because sometimes I'll be on set and I'm nine months pregnant. <laughs> when I did Samadora, I was nine months pregnant. Um, so I don't think they slowed me down. And when I did Daybreak, I mean, my baby was... I just left the hospital, I think yeah, a week. Yeah, and I went to set. So I'm not going to say my kids slowed me down. But naturally, I mean, I'm sure 
there were some things I probably would have done if I was single or if I didn't have children more, you know, so than when I had when I had my family. But having said that, you know, so now that the kids are adults and they're teenagers and they're doing their own thing, um, I just feel like it is time I've come into that space mm -hmm. where I can concentrate even more on myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, the whole essence of Omota, we were, I was at that symposium, and I think what I, what I took away was the kind of crowd you were able to pull together to begin to talk about serious things. That is one thing that you cannot equate Omota is an actress, to put it together and say, well, she's actually serious. But I take a break, <laughs> and when I return, I'm going to discuss that serious side of Omota that a lot of people don't even realize exists. We'll be right back. Well, I think about four years ago, I found out Omotala is actually an activist. When she, more than four years now, when she set up OEP, that's Omotala Youth Empowerment Program, and that there was this cover that Why Night I did for her, Omotala is angry, you know, <laughs> sitting down like that, you know what I mean? And then I didn't know you give back, because you've been giving back to widows for a number of years as well. You do all of these things, more or less, I mean, because you're in the media, you get support from the media, but can your, can your fans separate you, the actress, from you, the activist, and you, the philanthropist? I think now they can. Um, it's difficult for some of them. I understand that because I, um, of late, um, some clip was brought to my um, knowledge where, you know, I was talking in my elements and some of them were like, oh my God, you know. But that's the other part of me. You know, the other part of me is very vicious. <laughs> it's very, you know, and all of that. So when I'm in my activism mode, um, in beast mode, I'm not the, the entertainer and mm -hmm. the most sexy you know anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so those are different parts of me. And I think as time goes on, people are beginning to know, to differentiate them and say, okay, she's in that space mm. now. Um, when I'm doing that, I really don't care for how I look, um, how you perceive me. I don't care. I don't even think about it. I just, it comes from my heart and I just let it go. Um, but of course, when I'm an actor <laughs> or when I'm doing almost sexy things, yeah, then the beauty and then the look and the poise and everything mm -hmm. comes into play. But uh, personally, I'm able to differentiate all of them. I'm comfortable with that. Because and there's Omoti. Omoti is a serious one. Yes, Omoti is a very serious one. <laughs> there's Omosexy, as named by a husband. Yeah. And then there's Omotola. Yes, Omotola is the mother and the wife and the, the person you see without makeup at home, just running around in my sweats or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Omoti is? Omoti is pretty much my activism side and mostly the singer. Yeah, mostly the singer. Um, I say that because most of my singing is actually not about love or... You know, those kind of topics. I mean, it's not like I don't What's once bah? in a while. Bah, um, take, take it. No, what was the reason for the bah? That's your... You, uh, oh, okay. Um, it was just, it was actually in Nigeria. It was Nigeria. like, take it. Like, this is what I have, <laughs> you know, and everything. But I, ha I also have to say here that my first album was not a true, was not... 100% a true, yeah, representation of me. Why? Um, because, one, I wanted to do rock. I'm actually, when, when it comes to music, I'm more of a rock. Yeah. person. I'm more of a soft rock person. Um, I wasn't allowed to do that. Um, shout out to Obi Asika. He was my mentor for mm -hmm. my first album. And um, the late OJB was my producer. Um, so I had a company. I had a proper company and all of that. Uh, record label behind me. And so they didn't, they thought, you know, you can't come out and do rock. And we were talking about 2005, you know. I mean, people were just beginning to even like Nigerian music. And then you want to come and do rock. It's not going to work. So, yeah, so a lot of my kind of, and I write, I write my songs. Yeah, so virtually every song you hear from my first and second album, I wrote them. You know, so um, they were like, no, you have to change some of your lyrics, you have to change this, you have to change that. And so my first album, um, Obi, who I respect so much, said, you know, you have to, which is, he saw this thing a long time ago where you have to bring in the uh, local lingua and then, you know, make it some kind of Afro beat and stuff. And so that was how I was groomed in that direction. And so Nigello Agba is a result of thinking in that uh, direction. Um, my second album is more of me. It's more of my type, my type of oh, the way I think and the kind of issues I like to talk about, like Barren Land, which was um, adapted by Amnesty International. So I talk about things that I've seen on the field, you know, all my travels around the world, working for Amnesty International, uh, International for, U, for the UN, um, for uh, um, One.org, you know, my activism side. So I sing mostly. So when I write music and I want to perform music, it's mostly... 80% to 90% my activist self that is performing. Okay, so do you worry, do you, do you, have you heard people tell you things like, 
why is she going to sing? She can't sing. Does that bother you? Do you sing for money or what? I don't sing for money, and that's why I could pause whenever I, when I wanted to pause. And um, when I'm going to go back, I'm going to go back on my own terms anyway. Um, when I started my music career, I told everybody I'm going to be releasing an album maybe five years. People thought that maybe that music career happened because there was that block. Nollywood said some of you actresses were, were banned. Were banned uh, yeah, I mean, that was a motivation at mm -hmm. the time. Um, my music career was way before that time. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a lot of them now found out because they went on the internet and then they found this or that. Um, that was the only time I found enough time. Because at, at the beginning of my career, you know, it was really hard to do anything else. It, the, the movie industry is very tasking. Mm -hmm. So that was the time I found to immediately do Quickly what I loved something. to do. So they thought that was the reason why that was not. So you told us every five years. Yeah. So I would is there another album. one coming out soon? Um, yeah. Because you've done two. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. But I want you to say one last thing. When has turned 40, when is the next thing? When is this your center going to happen? When is mine? Your center. Yeah, a real estate producer. I mean, oh. real estate. So when is this center happening that we can come and watch and listen to Musala? Well, hopefully very soon. So please help me appeal to all the investors <laughs> to come in, come in, come uh -huh, in, come in. Uh -huh, so yeah, uh -huh. very soon. But I mean, the property is there. We, already, we have already started work. And mm -hmm. So hopefully very soon. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I must say, you, must, you can read online because at least Motola's edition is free on twmagazine.net, right? We made that possible. Oh, and thank you very much for that um, wholesome yes. um, copy. Thank you. Like, you are true to this woman, complete in all ways. Your kids are grown, your husband is there, you didn't run away, he didn't run away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing well. We well, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. We'll see you again.